Uh, yes, guys, I have dropped the social media platform links as well as the URL for the batch in the chat box. Uh, till the time we are uh, waiting for other participants to join this session, uh, you all can go and get the batch activated. Okay, so there are a good number of participants, uh, those who have joined. So let's get started now. Uh, good morning to all. Once again, we are here for the AZ 900 webinar, which is Microsoft Azure Fundamentals. I will quickly present few details before starting up with the webinar. So today's event webinar sponsor is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. Uh, Synergetics do believe in delivering trainings to solve the customer's pain point by crafting cutting edge learning solutions. We have solutions like persona based onboarding, onboarding add-on solution. Then we have certification solution certification plus add-on solution, reskilling solution. Then there is emerging technology training solution, certification ha hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution. 
Then there is latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solutions. So Synergetics do provide trainings and the learning services on the solutions. Then talking about the complete learning experience, uh, how, you, how our training will help you. It will give a complete learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. That is get recognized. Then the skilling journey, there are three types of certification. Specifically, uh, in first, we can see the fundamental, the basic level. Then we have advanced role based. And lastly, we have expert level certifications. The certification which comes under the fundamental level is AZ900. Then we have AI900. DP 900, which is on data fundamentals. Then we have PL 900 and SC 900. And in associate level, there are multiple certifications like AZ 104, AZ 204. Then we have AZ 500, AZ 700 and more. And in expert level, we have AZ305. Then we have SC100, PL600, AZ400. These are the specialty certificate, Azure specialty certificates. Uh, there are AZ120. Then we have exam on AZ140 and AZ220. Uh, those who are interested in getting certified in any of this certification, you all can connect with us. The details will be provided to you all in chat box later on. Then our certification offerings. So certifications will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skill. Uh, we do provide uh, certification add-ons onboarding add-ons like short duration modules and more. Then talking about today's training, which is organized and handled by ATC community, Azure Tech community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies and various emerging technologies. Under the ATC community, we have different kind of communities like emerging community to all. Then we have Azure Tech Community Pune for Punekers. Then emerging technology community Surat for Surat Techies. Then we have Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur Kers. All you just have to do is uh, install the Meetup app on your phone or on your device to follow this communities. The links will be there in the chat box for you all. So you can go and follow the communities. Then the code of conduct. The code of conduct will create a respectful environment to all. So please know no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation while the screen has been presented. Also, no one is allowed to do the recording as well. Our webinar speaker is Mr. Makaran Bohir. He brings a wealth of experience as an MCD, Microsoft Certified Trainer, currently serving as practice head at Synergetics. His profound knowledge and experience makes him an invaluable asset to our event. Then we have agenda of this webinar. Here you can see what you all can get to know in this webinar. You will get to know more about the certification and other details of AZ900. As I mentioned earlier in this webinar, 
for this webinar we have we are providing easy 900 learning achievement batch this is an complimentary batch which includes all the modules related to the topic which is easy 900 and the con concepts thought taught in this webinar uh, you can also share this batch on your linkedin and twitter profile to get this batch activated you just need to follow certain steps and you can get the badge activated. As here, you can see the badge activation process has been mentioned. First, you have to create your learn profile if you don't have one. And if you have created your learn profile, you just simply have to uh, click on the link which has been mentioned with the steps and get the badge activated. As soon as you get the badge activated, it will reflect under the achievements. Here you can see under the achievement, you will get your batch with the completion date and the title of the batch. You can share this batch uh, under the under the achievement. You can see the batches and there will be an icon to share the batch. You can share the batch on your LinkedIn, Facebook and other profiles. And beside the share uh, share icon, you can see the print button. As soon as I click on this uh, icon, I can print my print my batch. So please make sure you get your batch activated. You can share it on your LinkedIn and files. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms to get the relevant updates on upcoming webinars, workshop and certification trainings. Link Links are there in the chat box for you all. So please make sure you follow us over there. Then I appreciate everyone uh, to listening to me. Now passing over the mic to our speaker. Thank you all for your thoughtful attention. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitan. So hello everyone. Uh, am I audible to you? Is my voice is reaching properly to you? Is there any kind of a break? No, no, sorry. It's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So I'll share my screen. I hope uh, my screen is visible to you all. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for confirming. Yeah, uh, so you may answer it, uh, you know, by raising the hand or by giving a thumbs up also. Uh, you can see that in the react. Uh, uh, just beside the raise hand beside the people. You know, you can see over here a reaction. So. You can come over here and you can, you know, okay, give a thumbs up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Okay. So now let's get started uh, with uh, today's session. So this is. Uh, the session on Azure fundamental. You know, so we'll try and understand the concept of uh, you know, Azure cloud. OK, and uh, you know, we will try and implement uh, you know, okay, uh, whatever be the concept we will discuss. Uh, you know, okay, we will try and implement those concepts uh, you know, uh, by using Azure. OK, and uh, I will include uh, you know, everybody you know, uh, in that practical so that uh, uh, hopefully will everybody will be able to do the practical you know okay uh, along with me and of course uh, so the people who want to do the practical they can do it uh, you know and the people who want to only listen okay and uh, you know okay uh, attend the session only they can only uh, you know uh, listen to my session only okay it is not at all compulsory uh, to do a uh, practical Okay. 
So let's get started. Uh, my name is uh, Makrand. So as uh, you know, said by Chaitali, my name is Makrand Bhoir. I'm Microsoft Certified Trainer in MCT. Now I'm having around uh, 16 plus years of teaching plus development experience. I have completed my uh, AZ 400 certification. I'm Azure DevOps engineer. I'm Microsoft certified Azure DevOps engineer as well as an Azure administrator. I have completed my AZ 104 as well as uh, you know, I have completed my AZ 204, which is uh, Azure developer. OK, and uh, now also I have completed uh, no, Azure Fundamental, uh, which is AC 900. So all these certification I have completed. You know? <clears throat> so uh, uh, during the you know start of my career, I was you know okay, and I am still a Java trainer. You know, okay, I am conducting uh, you know lot of Java training. You know, and uh, I am as well as a Oracle certified professional. You know, <clears throat> so. So these days I am conducting a lot of uh, Azure training. But apart from uh, you know, conducting Azure training, uh, I'm conducting, you know, as I said, a Java J2E training, as well as uh, open source technology training, uh, which is on Angular and React. Okay. And uh, I've taken a training in a lot of corporates, uh, you know, uh, so including TCS, Accenture, you know, uh, JP Morgan, LNT, Infotech, Capgemini, okay, Siemens, you know, etc. These are my some of the client list. Okay, so so that is uh, you know uh, intro about uh, myself. Okay, I want to know uh, maybe uh, your name. Okay, uh. Which company uh, you're currently working? Okay, and then uh, if you're willing to share your, you know, email ID, okay, because I will be including that email ID uh, in my practical, so that uh, you will be also getting the access of a portal during this session. Okay, so whatever be the portal I will be using, so you can also go and make use of that portal. Okay, so for that. You know, I need your email ID, you know, OK. And uh, if you have a Microsoft email ID, you can share that with us. OK, or you may share any uh, personal email ID that will also. Work. So what I need, I need your name. OK, uh, maybe which company uh, you, know, you belong to. OK, and uh, the your email ID. So I'm expecting, you know, uh, everybody to write a single message in the chat box, you know, okay, and give like this. Yeah. So Asha has done that. Uh, you know. So like this, uh, you know, people can you know, give the response. So I'll just pick up uh, the email address, and by the way, uh, I will just make use of that email address. Uh, So I'll just make use of this email address uh, in my practicals. OK. I will not uh, suggest you to provide an company email address because I don't want uh, you to, you know, messed up with uh, the company subscription.
Okay, good. Uh, people are providing uh, you know the responses. I mean, so I'll just make use of uh, you people also in in my subscription to be able to you know do the practical. So let's continue with the. Uh, so I'll just uh, you know, take this uh, email addresses at the time of uh, doing a practical. Okay. So thank you so much uh, for uh, providing the input or pro providing the responses. Okay. So we'll continue with the presentation. So. So first, uh, you know, okay. Uh, let us uh, explore you know, the Azure certification gen journey. OK, and I assume that uh, if you are attending uh, this particular session is 900, uh, which is an Azure fundamental, you know, uh, you are uh, new to Azure fundamental. OK, and uh, no? OK, uh, the certification path OK, uh, will help you to, you know, to understand what path you should take. OK, so I'll just take a moment to explain that certification you know path so we are here okay i'll just uh, include the first certification you should attempt uh, you know, so which is an azure fundamental you know and um, the Course code is AZ 900. Okay, so once you complete this certification, uh, you will be getting a certificate which will has a star included. So you will get a one star, a single star certificate. You know, so once you finish what AC 900 certificate, you will get, uh, you know, okay, a single star certificate. So whatever be the fundamental, uh, you know, certification you are having in the Microsoft Azure, you know, so all uh, the course code is uh, 900. So like uh, AC 900, you know, okay, AI 900, DP 900. So all those are the, you know, fundamental or entry level courses. So once you finish this certification, AC 900 certification, you will be a Microsoft certified Azure fundam uh, you know, okay, uh, fundamental certificate you will get. Okay, and uh, the validity of this certificate is, uh, you know, okay, uh, entire life. So once you finish this certification, certification, you do not have to renew that certificate. Uh, okay. So the validity of that certificate uh, will be you know, okay for the entire life. Okay, then I'll discuss uh, you know after this uh, you know AZ nine hundred certificate uh, you know uh, there are two learning path, but there are of course more than two learning path. You know, but I'll just discuss only two learning path. Okay, so the first one I'll just go and discuss. Okay, uh, AZ one zero four. The second one, you know, which is an AZ204. So AZ104, you know, indicates Azure administrator. You know? So AZ104 indicates this Azure. Admin setup. And once you complete AZ104, you will be getting an uh, you know, associate level of certificate. And uh, every associate level you know, certificate will contain you know, two star. You will be getting a two star certificate. You know? So this is. Once you finish AZ104, so once you finish AZ104, you will be getting a certificate you know, saying that uh, you are uh, Azure Administrator Associate. Okay, and 
on that certificate, you know, you will get two star certificate, which indicates it is an associate level certificate. OK. You know, then there is as your developer. OK, and uh, the course code for that is AZ204. OK, and that is also an associate level certificate. So once you complete this certificate, also you will get a two star. So you will be getting an certification saying that you are an Azure developer associate. So ideally learning path. Once you finish this certificate, you can either go in this. You know, if you are you know, uh, having uh, your background as a you know, infrastructure uh, management or, you know, OK, uh, you're handling some kind of an infrastructure, then this would be, you know, OK, the path certification path for you. OK, if you are currently working as the you know developer, OK, then this might be, you know, OK, a good path for you. So. So AZ204. OK. <clears throat> but of course, you are learning only for, uh, you know, on getting the knowledge of, uh, you know, Azure or Azure Cloud, you know, so you can complete, uh, you know, AZ900. OK. So if you complete AZ900, that is also enough. OK. But let me tell you, um, after the COVID, uh, Microsoft has made this AZ900 course is optional. OK, so earlier it was, uh, you know, uh, for us uh, to get AZ, uh, uh, you know, uh, Azure Administrator Associate Certificate, uh, you know, uh, it is compulsory for me to finish AZ104 and AZ900. Earlier it was there. OK, but nowadays you can complete one paper and you will be getting you know azure administrator associate certificate you know this is not compulsory but i will highly recommend you to go and give this attempt okay okay because you know that will give you a overview of uh, you know, all the azure services okay and if you are appearing for that uh, certification course uh, you know okay so during that preparation of the certification examination, you know, OK, you will get to know a lot of things about the Azure. OK. And same goes with uh, the Azure developer, you know, OK, it is not compulsory for you to finish uh, AZ 900, but I will recommend you to, you know, complete AZ 900 because that will give you a solid foundation of, uh, you know, Azure. Uh, OK, and once you, you know, complete then you can go for either one of these paper. Okay. So then, once you get associate level certificate, uh, you know, okay. Uh, then next you can you know, try for, okay, the expert level certificate. You know, okay. So you can either complete uh, AZ three zero five, which is an Azure Architect examination. OK. As your architect. And the course code is AZ305. And once you finish this uh, certificate, uh, you, know, you will be getting a three star certificate. You know? So which indicates it is an expert level certificate. OK. And uh, there is one more learning path you are having. You, know, you can go and give Azure DevOps Engineer certificate. You know? Okay, and uh, the course code is AZ400. And once you finish this course, also you will get a uh, you know, three-star certificate, which indicates it is an expert level certificate. Okay. And there is a prerequisite uh, for these uh, you know, okay, exams. You know, so you either should have come from okay, this 
or you know you must have completed uh, this certificate so you might have completed any uh, associate level certificate okay then only you can attempt uh, the expert level certificate okay but of course you can directly also appear for the expert level certificate in case you are clear this uh, you know expert level certificate uh, you will be getting a score sheet you will be getting a score report but you will not get the you know certificate from the microsoft unless you are completed the prerequisite you know so either if you are directly appearing for this certificate uh, you know okay then it is compulsory for you to finish you know either this or this or any equivalent uh, you know associate level certificate Okay. So by the way, let me tell you the validity of all these, you know, uh, certificate is one year. So every year, you know, you will have to renew this certificate. As your administrator, architect, DevOps engineer, or developer, you, know, you will have to, you know, renew every year. Okay. But the validity of, uh, you know, okay, this is lifetime. There is no uh, validity of asset. So once you clear the examination, you will be, you know, okay, having in your profile that uh, you are, you know, Azure, you know, fundamental or um, AZ 900, uh, you know, one single SAR, you will be having forever for your, uh, 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 inside your uh, Microsoft Learn profile. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, okay, for the first time exam, you'll have to pay. Okay. And I believe uh, as for, uh, you know, uh, in India location, they are having uh, 4,800 rupees uh, for the certification on an average. Okay. Plus taxes. Okay. But most of the company provide a lot of, uh, you know, okay, a voucher for the employees to appear for these uh, Microsoft certification courses. Okay. Or, uh, you know, if you look at, uh, uh, in the uh, certification, uh, while uh, registering for the certification, okay. So if you provide your company email ID, you know, okay, uh, you will most likely to have a some kind of a discount. Okay. Well, so this, this is the learning part. Uh, should I? Okay. Uh, Sanjeev, uh, you know, is asking why is every year renewal is required? Uh, because, uh, you know, every year Microsoft is changing, you know, every, uh, you know, okay, two to three months, uh, you know, the course courses, you know. So uh, you have to, you know, okay, stay updated. And in order to stay updated, okay, updated, you have to, you know, okay. Uh, renew your examination. Okay, every year you know, you'll have to renew your you know, examination. As for as for now, you know earlier uh, Microsoft was having every two year you should renew your examination, but now as for the current policy, you have to you know renew your examination every year. Except AZ nine hundred, it is for lifetime available. Data engineering, uh, so you might be having uh, DP 900 is a fundamental courses. Okay, and uh, uh, there is some courses called as DP 203 also, which is uh, relevant uh, for the data engineering. Okay, you know, so this is uh, this learning path or your certification path, you know, 
so it is recommended that uh, you should finish first fundamental level certificate you know and there are you know few uh, fundamental level certificate like for example uh, you know a dp 900 ac 900 ai 900 you know which are uh, respective to a respective category okay and once you finish fundamental course you know okay you will uh, you can appear for associate level certificate you know okay and once you clear that associate level certificate you can appear for expert level certificate okay then let's get started uh, with the actual uh, topic for today is cloud ritesh is asking is it correct in order to get ac 305 you must have ac 104 earlier one eligibility to apply for ac if you have passed either 104 yes uh, you know okay it is uh, uh, you must have any associate level certificate uh, to you know complete ac 305 Uh, but uh, as i said also without completing is it uh, 104 or 204 or any associate level certificate <clears throat> if you try to directly go and give that uh, certificate of uh, 305 in case you are clear that uh, certification you know you will get the score score sheet but you will not receive the certificate unless you have completed that uh, prerequisite certificate Sapna is asking about for QA community manual or automation. What is the recommended uh, certification? Is there any ladder? Uh, I have one. Uh, you know, gone through that. Uh, okay, but I haven't heard also. Uh, there is there is any kind of a special uh, certification for you know, uh, the tester or uh, for you know quality or QA people. Uh, so. they will uh, most of the qa people uh, okay uh, will attend only uh, ac 104 courses okay but i'll try and uh, you know okay uh, find out uh, you know about your question during our uh, you know break time i'll just uh, try and you know find out and if i found you know i'll i'll let you know so let's start uh, you know, okay, with this cloud computing uh, so what is cloud computing you know? so for for understanding a cloud computing uh, you know um, uh, let's understand first these two diagram okay so so this is uh, you know okay uh, a diagram uh, which indicates uh, any kind of a uh, you know, uh, power plant you know? so for example whatever electricity which you are using on your home or on your office okay are you producing that electricity okay so now imagine we are not of course producing that electricity you know okay so uh, you know we might be uh, using that electricity to any one of the provider you know and there are a lot of providers like for example in my case in my area you know uh, mscb you know is one of the provider which uh, provides you know like for example uh, another provider could be a reliance another provider could be uh, you know okay adani power you know okay so those are providers you know okay so by using which uh, you know we will get the electricity uh, in our home okay but you know imagine for now okay so what if you know i am not uh, you know okay uh, 
using their uh, okay power or using their electricity which is supplied by them okay so rather i am you know producing my electricity whatever be the electricity i am consuming whatever be the electricity i am using you know i am you know producing that you know okay so for that okay uh, we will not take uh, you know okay that solar example solar panel example okay so we'll stick to this uh, power plant okay so for setting up this power plant you know okay you know imagine you know uh, how much uh, expense you you know have to bear initially okay so there is a lot of money we require to set up this big uh, you know power plant okay and then once you set up this big power plant okay to produce the electricity you know okay you require a lot of uh, machinery a lot of uh, equipment uh, you know okay a lot of manpower you require you know okay so ultimately you need a lot of money you know in hand okay so that you can uh, you know spend that money initially okay so that money which you are spending initially okay up hand you know is called as capital expenditure you know so to set up a like this a power plan you know you need a lot of capital expenditure okay and same thing we will uh, understand in now a case okay so we set up you know okay a lot of uh, company has you know okay uh, their own data center so in their own data center you will find there are a lot of servers like this big servers there are a lot of server rooms you will find in uh, you know every office okay and those servers are connected with the powers okay the cooling you know etc then uh, there are couple of uh, you know 24 by 7 security guards uh, you know okay will be monitoring this uh, you know okay so there are manpower required okay then uh, the server you have to maintain you know so you require some administrator also you know okay so like this to set up your own data center also you require lot of capital expenditure lot of money up hand up front you know you have to spend you know to you know set up a you know okay uh, uh, you know your own data center now imagine you know you are the you know startup company okay and you are not having you know um, the required uh, or uh, capital expenditure money okay required you know okay uh, uh, money uh, which you can spend you do not have that much of investment okay so then what you can do then you can you know choose rather than setting up your own data center okay so you can rent those services from you know okay from any one of the cloud provider okay imagine same thing you can just go and okay you know rent the electricity okay in the case of a power uh, plant example you know okay so we are going to rent the electricity you know okay so whatever electricity we will use in a month you know we will be you know okay mostly we will be getting you know okay bill of that uh, you know consumption only you know so you know i do not require to get the electricity you know that uh, uh, you no know, power plant to set up okay so rather i can choose any one of the provider okay which is in my area okay and i can just go and uh, use their electricity which is you know they will provide us okay and whatever be the electricity we are using we will be charged accordingly okay so that you know is called as pay only what you are using you will be getting a bill you know every month okay so there is of course there is no need of uh, you know okay plant maintenance so is it your responsibility to maintain their plant okay 
So if there is anything is happening inside the plant, it's not your responsibility to maintain their plan. OK, if they are, you know, planning to expand their businesses, you know, OK, so it's not a responsibility of you. OK, the scaling. You know. So. As a customer, you're using their power. OK, so you should pay only what you use. OK, and the same goes with the cloud computing in case of, you know, OK, we as an IT developer or we as an IT professional, you know, OK, so you can imagine you are a startup company or you are a beginner wants to explore the cloud, you know, OK, so you can, you know, OK, uh, just create an account or get a subscription from, you know, OK, the one of the cloud provider, we can get the subscription from, you know, OK, in this case, we'll talk about Azure only. OK, so we can get the subscription from Azure and we can use whatever be the services which are offered by the Azure. OK, so I can just go and use those services only. Whatever services I use, you know, I will be getting billed you know, accordingly. Well, it's the same concept is applicable over there, you know. So whatever you are using, whichever service you are renting, whichever services you are, you know, okay, using, you will be paying for that service, you know. So just like this, you know, power, do we have to maintain the server which is, you know, okay, created by the Azure? No, I don't have to, you know, maintain their server. You know, it's not my responsibility to maintain their server. You know, so that will take care. You know, by the Microsoft. You know, so I'll have to take care of my data, whatever data I am, you know, putting or feeding inside the service. Okay. So now you can see this. So earlier, before the cloud introduced, uh, you know, uh, every company needs, you know, a lot of. Uh, no big server like this. OK, and there always used to be a problem. OK, of uh, under utilization of these big servers, we are using it. So you can see this particular, you know, OK. Uh, this this diagram you can, you know, so every server, you know, OK, you will have under utilized. This percentage could be, you know, OK for your uh, better understanding purpose. You know? So 41 percent, 12 percent, 25 percent, you know, OK. So it is, you know, really uh, been you know, used to its full potential. OK, because uh, people will, uh, you know, OK, set up the server for, you know, uh, anticipating the worst scenario. OK, what will be, you know, ha what will happen if, uh, you know, there is a lot of load will come into our server. OK, and that uh, load will come only for, you know, OK, particular uh, month or particular week. OK, and uh, whole year we will, uh, you know, OK, have a flat, uh, you know, uh, uh, load. OK, so to just. Thinking the worst scenario, we will design a data center or we will design our server. OK, but that will be remain OK most of the time underutilized. OK, so this was one of the you know OK big challenges in the data centers you are having. OK. To that. OK. So a lot of uh, tech giant uh, has created uh, you know uh, their own data center and they have you know into a cloud businesses now. Microsoft is one of the uh, company. OK, like that we are having uh, AWS Amazon. OK, is uh, another company uh, like, like for example, Google we are having. Okay. Google is also you know, one more uh, company which provides you, you know, a lot of cloud services. You know, you can see this. You know, so. AWS also, oh, sorry, uh, uh, Azure also has like this, you know, big servers. OK, and you will find it uh, that big server in, uh, you know, mostly in the cities like, uh, OK, OK. So in India region, I think uh, uh, there are uh, three uh, 
region we are having in the India geography. We are having three region: West India, uh, Central India, and South India. But I believe that West India is currently stopped. Okay, but uh, we are having Central India and the South India. You know, in the Central India and the South India, you will you know okay find a lot of uh, big server like this. So as for the you know Azure. Azure has uh, 60 plus regions you know, where their data center is set up. OK, so you can choose. You no, know, OK, wherever you want to create a resource, you can choose that uh, you know, region while creating the resource. OK, so your resource will be you know, created in that particular you know, okay, city. So if you choose what uh, your region as uh, India, you know, South, you know, then that South India, wherever uh, you know, their data center is. So I believe their data center is in, I think, in Chennai. OK, so wherever their data center is, you know, OK, so that uh, it will create the resource over, you know, there. OK. So. Of course. You know this data center also need to manage, you know. So data center also, you know, okay, require to you know you need to maintain these servers. Okay. So is it my responsibility to maintain all these you know servers? You know, okay. No, it is not my responsibility. Okay. It will be maintained by the Microsoft. I will be only OK, looking after my uh, you know, services, OK, and whatever be the data I am feeding to the services, whether it is appropriate or not, I'll, I'll just go and check that. You know, so most of the thing, you know, OK, will be maintained by the Microsoft. OK. So I don't have to uh, you know, do uh, a maintenance, routine maintenance of the server, you know, I don't have to do a scaling also manually, you know. OK, so scaling is one of the you know uh, most important feature of cloud. OK, so for example. See, uh, I'll just give you one example, you know, so. You as a startup company, you know, OK, you planned. Uh, to. You know, uh, you know, set up one website. OK, which requires, you know, OK, some limited, uh, you know, capability. OK, so you hire, uh, you know, a virtual machine from the. The Microsoft Azure, OK, which has maybe uh, 16 GB of, uh, you know, OK, memory, uh, RAM, OK, and maybe uh, four CPUs, you know, OK, and X amount of, uh, you know, uh, the hard disk. OK, so maybe. During the initial period, uh, you know, OK, it worked well that. Uh, because of there was less load because less people are knowing you know, about your website. OK, and <clears throat> suddenly, you know, OK. You know, uh, after some event, OK, it got uh, you know, really popular. OK, and uh, suddenly there is, uh, you know, OK. Uh, Lots of lots of traffic coming uh, on the you know okay uh, on your uh, you know servers okay for example I I can tell you one example you know if your company is a startup company okay and uh, you know everybody must have uh, seen uh, you know Shark Tank episode or Shark Tank you know a series everybody must be following that okay and uh, you know okay once you go into a Shark Tank. You know, OK, you will be getting a lot of people will be getting once you go on here, you know, a lot of people will be getting, you know, OK, know about yourself, you know, OK. So after that uh, Shark Tank episode, you know, okay, so your website traffic suddenly increases. OK, so whatever be the you know, configuration initially you are having, that configuration is not enough to, you know, handle that much of load, you know. So then, of course, you need you know bigger machines, you know. So you require to scale, okay, this up 
So you can either scale this up horizontally or vertically. You know, so horizontal scaling means what? So I can create another, you know, okay, resource with the same capacity, whatever capacity I'm having. So it's the same capacity. I'll use one more resource. Okay. So I can just go and create a couple of resources with the same capacity and all these uh, you know, resources or all these VMs, you know, will go and execute uh, under load balancer. Okay. And uh, whatever be the incoming request, you know, okay. So it will be, you know, okay. Uh, that uh, load balancer will handle that incoming request. So, so doing this is called as, you know, okay. Horizontal scaling. Okay. So scaling out. You know, so increasing the machine instance, you know, so I'm having one instance initially, you know, I need, you know, a couple of more instances, you know, after my load get increased, you know, so that is called as scaling out. And when there is no, you know, load, you know, okay, so these machine will be automatically, you know, okay, come down to its initial count. Okay, so that's called as scaling in. You know, a lot of important feature which you will be, you know, okay, if you're using a, so you do not have to go and, you know, scale this manually. You can define the rule when to scale. Okay. And that scaling will happen, you know, automatically. And that uh, will be managed. The creation of these machines will be managed by the, okay. Uh, uh, so I do not have to do anything. You know? So you can either, scale out you know either you can use a uh, horizontal scale or you can use a you know okay uh, the vertical scale so vertical scale means what so whatever be the machine you are having so you can just go and <clears throat> prepare a bigger capacity machine you know? so so when there is a extra load on your website you know okay so to handle this you will just go and create you know okay a bigger capacity machine you know, and when there is less load, you will be, you know, scaling down to the original machine. You know, so this is called as vertical scaling, making the you know okay, machine bigger or making the resource capacity bigger. You know, is called as scaling up. Okay, and uh, you know, resizing to its initial capacity is called as scaling down. <clears throat> So this is one of the you know most important feature of you know okay the cloud that may be any kind of a cloud you know so scaling okay so based on the need you know you will be getting that resource okay and that when to you know scale out or when to scale up you know I can define that uh, while creating a resource okay so. This is one of the, you know, okay, super important feature of, uh, you know, any cloud. No, you won't be getting, uh, I think one person is asking. Okay. You know, Raipalli Kumar, uh, you won't be, you know, uh, getting any subscription. So for to uh, get the subscription, you need, uh, you know, to register for that subscription, you know, or somebody has to, uh, you know, give your subscription. You know? So I'll be giving my subscription, you know, uh, I'll be adding you people into my subscription so that you can, you know, use uh, some of the services. Big question. Big question indeed. Intending to purchase a city of my thousand user for TV. Any e-commerce website, I have an option Azure, digital ocean, Azure, service system, Linux.
Okay, so since this is the Azure session, I will recommend you to, you know, okay, uh, only Azure, you know, okay, because uh, this is the Microsoft uh, uh, session. I'll say whatever be the, uh, you know, requirement you are having, uh, that, uh, you know, okay, uh, can be fulfilled by AWS as well as, uh, you know, okay, by the, uh, uh, by the Azure also. But uh, let me just tell you, Azure is the fastest growing, uh, you know, cloud. Okay. But AWS has, uh, you know, market share, you know, which is more than Azure currently, you know. But it is uh, Azure, it is uh, one of the fastest growing uh, cloud. Okay. And whatever be the, you know, uh, requirement you are providing uh, Amul, so all these requirements can be fulfilled by the Azure also. So it is possible to create a Linux system as well as it is possible to create a CD and content delivery network, you know, okay. And uh, you know, uh, then uh, you can go and decide, uh, you know, okay, based on uh, where, uh, you know, okay, oh, which your company is, uh, you know, um, uh, more towards inclined towards. So if your company is, uh, you know, okay, um, is using a lot of Java re related resources, you know, okay. Then uh, you can think of, you know, for the natural choice would be for the Java developer, you know, just to go and make use of uh, AWS, you know. If you are, you know, okay, a Microsoft centric, uh, you know, uh, uh, the company, then you will, of course, will, uh, you know, like to go for AW, uh, you know, Azure Cloud, you know. So that uh, decision, you know, uh, is yours. Okay, but all these uh, requirements can be fulfilled by AWS or by the Azure. Both cloud can be, you know, capable of fulfilling this. Data center capacity is measured in MW. Can you explain a little bit more uh, on this? Data center you know, uh, capacity uh, in one single data center. I, uh, I hope you are referring uh, as a Microsoft data center now. You know? So in one particular data center, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, big servers will be uh, maintained. And uh, uh, in one server, you know, okay, there are a lot of resources can be created. Okay. <clears throat> so, of course, uh, you can go and create, uh, you know, a lot of resources in one server using the virtualization concept. Okay. But uh, frankly, as an end user, you know, as a customer of the data center, I do not uh, require to think, uh, you know, okay, uh, how they are, you know, managing the data center. Uh, when to use vertical and horizontal? Uh, it is again, uh, you know, up to you. You know, so if you want to, you know, okay, uh, uh, go for, you know, okay, uh, only one resource, okay, and you know, in case you want to increase the capacity of that resource, you know, you can just go and make use of, uh, you know, okay, choice of going for. You know, vertical scaling. Okay. Or, okay, uh, you know, if you want uh, you know, to create a multiple instances and uh, those multiple instances, uh, you know, okay, need, uh, you know, uh, to be run inside a load balancer, then you can go, just go and make use of, uh, you know, uh, horizontal scaling. Yeah, SK is uh, uh, suggesting something. <laughs> okay, uh, so cloud computing, you know, so that means. 
using the services uh, which are offered by the cloud by using a internet. You know? So for using that services, I need, you know, okay, uh, the subscription, of course, you know, okay. And once I have that subscription, okay, I need only the internet, uh, you know, okay, on my machine to use those services. You know? So if I have that, you know, okay, uh, I'm having uh, everything. Okay. So cloud computing, as I said, okay. Uh, is uh, cloud computing, uh, you know, uh, so there are varieties of a cloud uh, which will provide you different resources, like for example, compute resource, networking resource, storage resource, you know, okay. So all those resources I can just go and use by using internet. Okay. So whichever resource you, you know, as a customer you want, you know, okay, you can just go and you know create that resource in the appropriate location. Okay, so inside that appropriate location, that resource will be created. Okay, and then you can just go and make use of that resource. Okay. So as I you know explained to you earlier also, you know, so your launching and new you know uh, social media you know uh, website okay so initially uh your focus on launching that website uh, on a particular country okay and after that uh, you know okay uh, launching in the you know okay uh, that particular country united states for example okay so you planned next to go globally, you know? So there is going to be a, you know, same challenges you will face, which we have discussed. Okay. So for example, large upfront, you know, money you require to set up a data center. <clears throat> okay. So whatever be the, you know, infrastructure uh, we are going to set up, we will uh, set up that infrastructure, you know, okay. Uh, to by thinking in bad possible, you know, okay, uh, or which is worst possible condition, okay, and uh, okay, which is just the estimation. So it roughly uh, going to take four to five months to set up, uh, you know, okay, this server, okay, and suddenly that uh, website become popular, you know, lots of user, okay, there will be uh, come on, you know, okay, their website. Okay, so of course, you know, because of the smaller capacity, you know, whatever they have initially estimated, you know, okay, because of that, okay, the uh, user will experience, you know, like lat latency, latency, okay, so is a time between, uh, you know, okay, time period between sending a request and getting a response, you know, okay, so that is a uh, more latency, you know, okay, people will uh, less kind of use, uh, you know, that website. So to have a better user experience, you should have a lesser latency. Okay. So there is a challenge of uh, you know uh, scaling. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, security and compliance. Uh, you know. Okay. So these are some of the you know, challenges you will require. Okay. And when there is less load, you know, you will have to scale it down. You know. So if you're doing this manually, you know, so a lot of you know, maintenance you will have to do on your data center, you know, okay. And there is a lot of manpower you require, okay. And if you're doing in one city, one country like this, and if you plan to do it in the, you know, expanding globally, okay. And the same challenges will occur in the, you know, next data center, whichever you are setting up, you know. So rather than, you know, maintaining, you know, your data center, you will go and make use of a cloud computing, you know. So if you are using a cloud computing, you know, so there is no initial investment you'll have to do, you know. Okay, so you can just go and uh, you know uh, create a subscription, okay. And most popular subscription you can go and make use of pay as you go, okay. So whatever be the you know, amount you are spending in monthly, 
you will be getting you know okay build as for that you know just you know same 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 uh, thing uh, with our electricity so whatever electricity we are using you know so we'll have to pay for that electricity if i don't uh, you know okay want that capacity so i can just go and you know okay uh, decrease that capacity you know so if i create a resource okay so i can just go and you know decide the capacity you know so for example if i am creating a machine virtual machine you know i can just go and control what will be a size of that uh, you know virtual machine you know so if i need more i can create more if i need less you know i can create less okay and i can just go and set up uh, you know okay that to happen automatically also you know by uh, you know setting up a few rules <clears throat> okay well, so we'll see this a uh, couple of slides and then we'll come back to the you know the portal so there are you know uh, these three important uh, services which are offered by uh, the microsoft azure to you so first one is infrastructure as a service okay second one is uh, platform as a service okay and third one is software as a service okay i a a s p a a s and s a a s infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service you know okay so you must have heard about these word you know okay lot of time okay so infrastructure as a service you know platform as a service and you know, software as a service okay so in this particular you know okay uh, category whatever be the cloud services so you will find in every category you know there are few services which are offered by the you know microsoft azure to you okay so for example okay let us first example uh, let's first understand what is infrastructure as a service what is platform as a service and what is software as a service with this particular example you know so <clears throat> same you know thing we will try and you know uh, analyze by this uh, we'll take this synonym okay so having your own car you know if you are you know uh, owning the own car or if you are having your own car okay so if you are traveling from one uh, you know destination uh, one uh, location to another location you know so <clears throat> you will uh, you know everything you, you know will be controlled by you you know so whatever be the maintenance of the cars you will have to do it uh, you know uh, you will have to you know uh, okay add some fuel to your car you know you will have to check whether that uh, insurance is uh, you know okay, uh, is proper or whatever be the documents are for the car are proper poc you know okay is uh, properly done or not you know you will have to drive your own car you know okay and uh, uh maybe you will have to you know control that navigation also you know so everything you are managing if you are owning your own car you know of course you know so this is you know you can think of you know you are owning your own data center you know so everything your responsibility to maintain about you know okay your own data center okay and same goes with the your own car you know all the responsibility is yours okay so to check whether you know okay uh, the tire has uh, you know okay uh, appropriate uh, you know amount of a pressure or not you know okay whether the you know wheel aligned or not you know okay the steering aligned or not you know so everything will have to take care you know so now you think of renting a car so renting a car you know uh, so i don't have to maintain this car so whatever be the maintenance of the you know car okay 
for example, uh, okay, whatever be the general, uh, you know, okay, services, I'm doing it, uh, you know, okay, maybe, uh, you know, okay, once, uh, you know, six months or once a year, okay, so that, that you will have to maintain about your car, okay, but you will have to, you know, control about your trip, you know? so whatever be the fuel, you will have to just go and, you know, okay, see that fuel is you know properly or not by the way this insurance will also will uh, take care by the you know uh, whatever be the uh, provider okay so that uh, provider will take care of that insurance you know okay then uh, if you are self driving it you know so then you will have to you know uh, use it or you know this will also provide by you know that rental car but uh, in the rental car, you know, mostly you will, uh, you know, drive the car. Okay. So, for example, if you're renting your own car, oh, sorry, if you're renting a car, so uh, you can think of uh, when you go to uh, Goa for a vacation and if you want a particular car, you know, so you can rent. There are a lot of provider in Goa, you know, which is uh, running that business, that, that kind of a business, you know. So, you will get, uh, you know, rental car, Okay, maybe uh, at your doorstep. Okay, maybe at the airport or maybe at the you know. Okay, uh, the railway station like uh, you know. Okay, Madgao railway station or Thiving railway station. You will get uh, the delivery of the car, and from then you know. Okay, maybe uh, you know during your during uh, you know holiday you can uh, you know act as a owner of that car. You know. Okay, but they will give you a well maintained car. Okay, and uh, Whatever, wherever you are traveling, you'll have to just take care of the fuel. You'll have to, you know, drive that car yourself. You'll have to, you know, okay, just go and uh, check for the navigation. Everything you will be maintaining. So this, you know, rental car, you can think of infrastructure as a service. Okay, where, you know, okay, whatever be the infrastructure which will provide by the company or you know will be provided by the you know cloud vendor and uh, whatever be the software on top of that infrastructure okay and whatever be the middle uh, where runtime software or whatever be the application which i need you know so i can take care of that uh, you know, okay on the infrastructure you know, so this rental car, you know, you can think of infrastructure as a service. Now, you are having an example of, a, you know, okay, this maybe Uber, Ola Uber or taxi. Okay, so where maintenance, you know, okay, will be done by, uh, you know, uh, the company. I don't have to do a maintenance. Okay, the fuel. You know, insurance driver, you know, okay, we'll have to, you know, do that also, okay, and uh, that will provide also vehicle, okay, but I can control the navigation, you know? okay, so, so this, most of the thing, you know, which will be taken care by the, you know, uh, cloud, or, and few things will be, you know, responsibility of money, you know, so, this can you can think of a platform as a service. So there are small things, you know, there are limited things you will control. Okay. And most of the thing will be managed by the you know cloud company. Okay. And the last example, you can think of a bus, you know. So everything will be managed by the company. You know, so you'll have to just go and sit inside that uh, you know bus, you know, okay, and uh, you know. You get the ticket and you will be okay traveling from one location to another location so there i can't say you know okay uh, please take into this route and they will you know go by whatever be there fix you know? so this is the example of a software as a service where everything will be provided by the cloud vendor okay you'll have to just go and purchase that service you know okay and just go and make use of that service you know? so now you can think of this is an example of on-premise where everything will be managed by you. Okay, this is an example of, a, you know, IAAS. Okay, so for example, virtual machine, 
okay where the required infrastructure will be provided by the you know okay azure and on top of that uh, which operating system require what software require i can decide that okay once you go and create a virtual machine you know then so platform as a service uh, you know okay you can think of uh, the example such as app service you know so app service uh, is example of uh, you know hosting your web application on the microsoft cloud you know so where so it will ultimately need you know some machine to run it will ultimately need uh, you know okay some kind of a software some operating system you know okay maybe if you are running a dotnet application you need uh, you know okay dotnet sdk or if you are running a java application you need a jdk so everything will be managed by the you know okay uh, cloud but the only thing you will have to go and manage you know what application you want to install you know so that uh, i will manage okay rest everything will be taken care by the the cloud provider so that is the example of a platform as a service you know so one of the most popular example is you know okay a uh, platform as a service is app service you know and uh, software as a service you can think of uh, you know any example okay of uh, you know outlook example only for that matter you know okay so gmail example you know? so everything will be maintained by the microsoft you know you know so you have to just log in into that machine okay or oh, sorry log in into that uh, particular website and uh, you will be able to access your data you know so it is not strict uh, you know you will be using only this machine then only you will be you know able to access that particular inbox or okay that's website you know so once you have that email id password you will be able to use uh, you know that so maybe outlook is an example of uh, uh, the software as a service or gmail is an example of a software as a service okay so you can think of so in a on premise okay i will be managing you know i as a the owner of that on premise you know everything will have to manage you know by us so networking storage server virtualization operating system you know whatever be the middleware software data application everything will be managed by us you know if i use a infrastructure as a service you know okay there are few thing will be managed by the cloud vendor so for example uh, you know okay physical server you know network storage server virtualization that will be managed by the you know okay uh, the cloud vendor and uh, you know i'll have a control which operating system i need what software i need what uh, application i need you know okay so that i'm having a control you know under infrastructure as a service but if i use a platform as a service you know okay so as a customer you know uh, managing the application is only uh, the responsibility of mine okay so everything else will be taken care by the you know the cloud vendor so i don't have to manage anything you know and if you are using a software as a service you know then you know everything will be managed by the cloud vendor okay so you need to only use that uh, service which is offered by the you know, microsoft cloud okay so i'll just see if there are any kinds of question amit is saying something do you have any question that you can you know, can use any process to find the body we can directly store the data in the cloud Um, I did not understand the question. 
Okay, but if you're uh, trying to store a data you know, of uh, daily uh, recording of a CCTV camera, you know, so you can just go and make use of one of the cloud service. Uh, you know, okay, so for example, storage service, then you can just go and make use of uh, you know okay. um, uh, the cloud service. For example, uh, you can go and make use of a storage account to store you know, okay, uh, the files. Such as uh, you know, video file you can just go and store into a storage account. You know? Okay, but uh, you need you know to give that data from your you know okay, uh, CCTV camera you know okay, to the uh, cloud. That you'll have to go and give it. Cloud computing is, uh, you know, as I said, uh, uh, so uh, using whatever be the computing resource, networking resource, uh, you know, and storage resource which is provided by the cloud vendor, you know, okay, using those uh, services over an internet, it's called as a simple cloud computing. So, so I am just uh, yeah. Uh, so it's saying real-time data direct on the cloud because it in the CCTV and all views of it. So that. Uh, for storing that data, such data you can use what storage account. So it can store, you know, okay, massive amount of data. Okay. So one of the storage service you can use a storage account to store a uh, data. And I believe, uh, you know, okay, uh, I have already answered Harsh, uh, you know, Harsh again and again is asking what is cloud computing. So cloud computing is a, uh, you know, uh, Whatever be the you know, services which are offered by the cloud, uh, you know, vendor providing those services, uh, you know, over a internet. And that is simple uh, cloud computing. Uh, in order to get the badge, uh, you know, you can just simple uh, whatever be the uh, link uh, Chaitali has provided. You can just go and you know. Uh, uh, click on that link and you know, just skip that uh, batch. Okay, so that documentation uh, might be provided by her. Okay, so you can check. Uh, uh, the chat box. Computing is just a word, no? Uh, you know, it's computing. Computing is what? Uh, just a word, you know. Okay. Maybe. Uh, so there is one service called as compute service. I don't know uh, whether you are asking about that or not. You know, but there are you know uh, one type of services. Uh, which is compute service, which is provided by the Azure. In the compute service, you know, okay, you will get uh, a lot of processing, you know, power. Compute means what? Uh, you know, the processing power. Okay, so, for example, you are having a, some kind of a processor to process it something, you know, to compute it something. You know? So, whatever the services which are, uh, you know, under that category, you know, for example, virtual machine is one of the compute service. App service is one of the compute service. Azure function is one of the compute service. VMS is, is one of the compute service. Okay, but apart from a compute service, you know, okay, there are services like storage services. So under storage services, we have storage account. You know, okay, database services. We are having a lot of databases. Okay, networking services. We are having a virtual network, you know, load balancer, application gateway. So a lot of services are you know provided by the uh, you know, Azure. 
emerging of AI technology, what is the change can you find in the cloud computing? Also, they are new job role in. Yeah, so there is a demand of you know okay, generative AI, you know, and, and it is getting increased. Okay, and uh, there are a lot of uh, webinar or there are a lot of session which happens, uh, you know, okay, on every week basis, uh, you know, okay. And I believe on this 30th of uh, you know, okay, uh, January also in the next week also only, you know, okay, we are having one more session on uh, specifically on AI. So you can just, uh, you know, okay, register for that uh, you know, session also. So that will give you a lot of insight uh, what is happening, you know, uh, in that particular world. So there is drastic change are uh, happening, you know, in that uh, area. For the cloud, there is huge demand in the market and surveillance industry. Well, no, of course, it's okay. Which prim, premises application can be deployed in the Azure App Service? Which on premise application can be deployed on deployed as Azure App Service? Um, so you can think of uh, you know uh, uh, all the application I can deploy. Okay, but if you want to, you know, manage your data, okay, so you can just keep, uh, you know, okay, the data with yourself, okay, and whatever be the application you are having, you can just go and, you know, deploy that application on the, you know, app service. So you are having a lot of category of, uh, you know, application, for example, .NET application, Java application, Python application, you know, Go application, PHP application, all kind of application you can create in the uh, app service. Even you can go and create a containerized application which you can make use of a Docker images also. Yeah, uh, Sapna. Uh, uh, maybe Chaitali will share, uh, you know, this link. So Chaitali requesting you to share whatever be the, uh, you know, AI session is happening in the next week. You know, you can just please provide uh, that uh, link to them. Leasing model means what? Uh, taking it in on the rent. You know? Okay. So it's simple. Uh, the amount of time you are, you know, using a virtual machine or using a particular resource, you will be charged accordingly that, you know, so whatever bill you will be getting ultimately on the usage bill, you know. You know, so I'll just uh, explain that, uh, you know, okay, when I just come into the uh, practical part, you know, I'll just explain that once again. Uh, so maybe we'll take a break in uh, you know just ten minutes. Okay, we'll wait for a short break. Okay, but before that, let me just go and explain few you know concept. So I'll just explain this concept. You no, know? you know, so you can see this uh, a region. You know, okay, is a concept uh, of Azure, Microsoft Azure only. So region is a physical location. Okay, so where you know you will have a data center present. You no, know? so in the India region, you know, okay. So in the India geography, we are having these three regions. Okay, so in all the region, you can see wherever it is dot indicated. You know, okay, all these are the region where the Microsoft has the data center setup. Okay. And uh, you know, okay, Microsoft increasingly, uh, you know, okay, changing uh, this also. Okay, so okay, with this diagram, you know, uh, uh, might be you know, okay, if you look at currently, there might be a uh, more regions. Okay, so as for the Microsoft documentation, there are currently sixty plus regions are available in the entire world. Okay, and uh, okay. Region is a place where you will have a data center. And in a region, your actual resource will get created. In the data center, your actual resource will get created. 
ओके ओके एंड यू कैन जस्ट गो एंड अंडरस्टैंड दिस वन You know, so this is a resource hierarchy. You know, okay. So on the top of the resource hierarchy, we are having uh, something called as a management group. Under the management group, I will find you know okay something called as a subscription. Okay, and subscription you can uh, you know, uh, understand this way. Subscription is the billing boundary. You know. so if you have a subscription attached to your account you know okay then you will be having okay uh, the authority to create an any resource okay so if you are having a subscription attached to your account you know you will be able to use you know, the resources so under the subscription i can just go and create a resource group and under resource group i will be creating you know the resources so over here i'm having Lot of resources. Okay, so like for example, virtual machine, virtual network, app service, SQL databases, you know, functions, you know, storage account. All these resources, you know, can be placed inside you know the resource group. Okay, and let me now, you know, go to the Uh, portal and show you how it will look like so when you just uh, log in to the portal.azure.com you know so if you open a browser and just press what uh, you know okay portal.azure.com it will take you to the you know uh, this uh, website Where it will ask you a user ID and a password. You know? So I have already logged into this. Okay, and once you logged in, you know you will see whether you are logged in with the appropriate username or appropriate password. Okay, and under this, you know, okay, currently I am having a subscription. Okay, and if you look at which is the subscription, you know, I am having. so if i search for that subscription you know i'm having one subscription which is currently active you know visual studio enterprise subscription you know so as a part of you know uh, mct i will get uh, this subscription you know so i am using this subscription you know in every training you know? so whatever be the microsoft training you know i'm having i'm using that uh, this subscription in every training okay so this subscription and i will be using for this particular training also now in this subscription okay currently if i am you know okay if i open this subscription and if i see what what all resource group You know, okay, we are having. You know, so there are a lot of resource groups. Uh, you know, that are currently uh, a part of my subscription. Okay, if I look at uh, virtual machines, you know, there are a lot of uh, you know virtual machine which I have already created uh, in the past. Okay, so I will be also creating few resources. Okay, for uh, you know, okay, uh, for this particular training. okay and will be using those resources but along with that i want you to also use uh, you know okay my portal so in order to use my portal by you guys you know, i am just going to create okay okay i will add you know all of you guys as a user inside my organization or inside my you know entra id you know so earlier it was called as a active directory you no know, but recently uh, you know microsoft has rebranded 
Active Directory as Microsoft Entra ID. So currently, if you look at uh, there are 13 users are part of my Entra ID uh, and I'll be adding uh, you know, okay, new users. Uh, so let me just go and add a new users. Okay, and if you look at, you know, so uh, whatever in the weekdays I'm conducting a batch, you know, okay, all those, uh, these people are you know, present in, in my current batch. Okay, so apart from that, I'll be adding you people also inside this, uh, you know, intra ID, you know. So I can just go and create a new user. Okay, one by one. You know, I can create a new user one by one. Okay, but that takes a lot of time. So rather than creating a new user one by one, you know, okay, I can just go and you know, create a bulk user. Okay, so I want to, okay, invite an external users. You are acting as an external user because you are providing my your email ID, you know. Okay, and all these email ID, you know, I will be taking and I will be adding, you know, here inside my entry ID, you know. So you will become a guest inside my entry, ID. you know. So all these users are the guest, you know, and I am direct member of that, you know, entry ID. Okay. Or you can think of uh, whatever be the employee working in the organization, they will be act as a direct member of that, uh, you know, organization, or they will be act as a direct member of that entry ID. And, you know, if you, let's say if there is a consultant, you know, who has hired by the company, maybe that consultant is there with you for maybe for one month or two months or three months. You know, so whatever be the new area, you know, okay, he or she will be guiding you about that. And once that, you know, project is completed, that person is go away from that um, okay, organization. So rather than creating that person, that account, okay, as a you know, direct member of your Entra ID, you can just go and create it as a, you know, okay, external user or invite as a external member. Okay. And once that, uh, you know, okay, a person has received that invitation, accept that invitation, you know, that will become also a part of your Entra ID, you know. So these person, depending on whatever be the permission I'm providing, you know, Based on that, you know, that person will be able to use whatever be the services which is offered by the, you know, your company. So now I will just, okay, invite. So I'll just bulk invite template. I'll just go and download. Okay. And. This template is CSV file template. So let me open it in the Excel. So this is where you will see that template. And after this, I want you to redirect to the portal.azure.com. Okay. And I give the message as welcome to. Primary. Directory, so this is the name of my primary. Primary directory is the name of my, you know, uh, tenant. And over here, you know, I'll have to provide your email address. You know? So I'll just go and provide. So all these email addresses. Okay, and I can just go and provide all these messages. Huh? So now let me take up uh, users which you have added. Okay. 
OK, so I'll just go and add to users one by one. So I have added already my name to Kumar. This is not added. Let's see. Add. This is added. Yeah, So it will take maybe five minutes for me to add all these users. So let me add it. All these users. Okay, and uh, just cross check whether you have given that email address correctly or not. Otherwise, you will not get invitation. Okay, so I'll add few people. Okay, I'll add just to me two more minutes. I'll just go and add all these people. I hope you're not uh, giving me the email addresses repeatedly. Just checking all the email addresses. Add all these email. You are sure.
So I believe 37 user I'm trying to have right now. Or somewhere around 35 to 37 people I'm trying to have. Look, so I just save this. Okay. And I will upload that file. Once I go and upload the file, Okay, I'm just going to click on. Okay, so it's trying to create uh, all these uh, user account. And once this user account is created, uh, so it is successful now. Now I can just come and refresh this. You know? So you can see this, uh, there are total 46 uh, number of user have created in my account. You know? And now, you know, you will be uh, able to log in. Okay, so now uh, you should have received that uh, invitation you know, in your email ID. Can you just check your email ID? Okay, so you should have received that invitation. You will find that invitation in the inbox or maybe in the junk email. Okay, so you have to uh, you know, accept that invitation. And as a part of expect, uh, you know, accepting that invitation, uh, you will be, uh, you know, get registered into the you know, portal.azure.com, you know, and ultimately you will be redirected to the portal.azure.com, you know, and you will be using your own ID and password. You know? So that password is not controlled by me. Password is whatever be the email ID is provided that, uh, you know, uh, you know, domain will be, you know, control your password. So whatever be the password, you are using it for your ID. You know, you have to use the same password for accessing the portal also. No. So once the registration is completed, you will be, you know, okay, uh, able to redirect to the you know, portal. So anybody has received that invitation? Yeah, Raghav saying uh, Raghav has received that invitation. So Raghav, would you like to share your screen? Uh, maybe I'll guide you. you know. Just give me a thumbs up uh, if you would like to share the screen. Yes or no? So that I'll give you a rights to share the screen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so now you should be able to share the screen. Raghav, I'll stop sharing. You please share the screen. Yeah, so did you receive that invitation? Just can you open that? Uh, Yeah, can you see that accept invitation? So you'll have to click on that accept invitation. So when you accept invitation, it will maybe redirect you to some other page. I believe you have shared only one uh, browser, not the entire screen. I see only your Gmail account, not other screen. Excuse me. Uh, Raghav, now uh, if you wish to speak, uh, you know, you can also speak. Uh, you can unmute yourself and you can speak if you. Yeah. 
Yeah. So once you click on this uh, annotation, just can you show me uh, the annotation? Yeah. So it will uh, redirect you to the. Okay. Then you will have to provide uh, whatever be the ID password. And the password you will enter the same password, which is uh, of your Gmail account. So once you do this signing, you know, okay, uh, you will be redirected ultimately to the you know, portal. Okay. Uh, Maran, do I need to click yes for this? Stay sign in. So that... Yeah, that's that. You can say yes or no. Uh, that's okay. So you have to, you know, okay. Say yes, accept over here. So you are, you know, connecting to primary directory, which is created by me. And you will become a part of my directory. So you are giving you know, consent to this. So can you see this? So now you are become a part of my directory. Now say uh, get started button or you can cancel that button or you can Click on this cancel sign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you are able to connect. So can you see on the top uh, right corner your email ID? And below yeah. that, you are able to see you know the primary directory, which is the directory which is created by me. You know? Ah, yes. But you will become a part of my directory now. But you won't be able to access any kind of a services till now. I have not provided the access on my subscription. You are become a part of my Active Directory, my entry ID. But I have not, as a owner, I have not provided the rights on my subscription. No, okay, for you people as of now. Okay, so once this part is finished, you know, okay, uh, you can. You can stay uh, logged in okay. and you can uh, now Raghav, you can uh, stop sharing and sure. just uh, share my screen. Okay. And I'm making you as I tell me. Okay, and. So once you. Once you accept that invitation, you will become a part of my, um, you know, intra ID. And once you become a part of my intra ID, you know, let me now create, you know, okay, one resource and let me provide, you know, okay, some permission. So I will be uh, providing you guys, uh, you know, okay, initially a permission, only a, a reader permission because, uh, you know, if I go and provide uh, any other permission it will be a lot of chaotic situation you know okay so i will be initially providing you only a reader permission okay so for now you know let us wait for a break break we will take a break for 15 minutes okay so let's wait for a break and once we come back from a break you know i will uh, you know okay uh, add you people in the you know my subscription and i will give you a permission on my subscription also so we'll see that uh, you know how to do that but till now you can complete that uh, you know okay uh, registration process so we'll start the break i'll start the timer and we'll take a 15 minutes of a break usually we'll take a 20 minutes but this time we'll take 15 minutes of a break thing Okay, and when we come back on, uh, when this time is you know, reached to zero.
Uh, if you did not receive, you know, you, should, you can just go and uh, check uh, your junk email. Yeah, that's OK. So if you're able to see this page, you know, that's OK. You will receive that email if you have provided that email ID uh, correctly. You will receive that invitation from my end. Very soon. You can check. So if you are not able to see, you know, uh, the primary directory, then you might have already, you know, okay, using some kind of a subscription or any other account also. But can you see this over here? You know, so you have to click on that. Uh, if you are not able to see your primary directory, then you can click on the profile icon. Okay, and there is an option called a switch directory. You can click on that switch directory. Okay, and there might be, you know, possibly a lot of directories you will see. Okay. And one of the directory you will see uh, called as primary directory. So you have to switch. So in the primary directory, you will have to switch. So once you switch, you will be, you know, okay, logged into the primary directory. You know, and this will happen if you are having a multiple directories like this. You need to check your junk email also because if I have provided, is your email ID is there? The last email ID which I have taken, Sopnil. So you guys have provided uh, after that, no? It's not added yet. Somebody has provided uh, their company address, you know, so be careful uh, while using your company address.
Okay, so I've added a uh, few users. So there are total 57 users currently. Okay, so you should have received that uh, email. If not, uh, you know, uh, just go and see your uh, junk email or inbox. Okay, so we'll wait for 10 more minutes. After 10 minutes.
so harsh you, if you got this you know you are good you why are you asking where you can see the invitation because you already received it no you are already uh, done the uh, registration also so you are able to log in na no? you won't be able to see the subscription yet uh, but uh, because yet i have not provided any kind of a you know permission on the subscription so i'll be doing that right now this person is still not added so let me add this also last person so i'll add him as and there are few users Yeah, them also. Okay, so now uh, I will just go and create. Uh, I'll just go and create uh, one resource group. You know, so. in that resource group uh, you know okay i'll just go and create a couple of other uh, resources you know which uh, you know you will be using it so for example i am just using a resource group okay and i'll just go and create a resource group and for this az900 training i'll just create and resource group so whenever you are uh, searching for any uh, thing from the azure portal you can search for that uh, you know okay resource or anything you know which you need you can search for that in this search box or you now can you see this three uh, you know bar three lines you know if you click on that three lines you know that will give you a lot of options you know, and if you go inside all services so whatever be the services which uh, azure microsoft azure provides all those services we will be able to see you know in this options you know so you can see this so under you know uh, i think one per one person was asking compute you know so under compute we are having lot of services you know so for example you know availability set uh, azure compute no azure virtual machine vmss virtual machine scale set uh, okay functions and all dot sort of a uh, you know okay services we are having you know in the uh, compute containers container instance container apps all these are the services from the compute category you know? just like that uh, we are having uh, you know storage category you know? so if you look at storage you know, we are having You know, one of the storage service we are having storage account, you know, and all other services which are provided under storage category. Networking, you now we are having VNet, you know, okay. Then IP addresses, subnet, you know, okay, and uh, all those kind of uh, uh, resources you will find it over here. So all these category you will be able to see it over here, but currently you won't be able to see, you know, because I do not have given a permission on. Uh, my subscription so uh, now i'll just go and create one resource group okay so when i create a resource group you know you can remember that hierarchy which we have discussed uh, you know before we uh, went on a break you know so you can remember this under the subscription i can create a resource group so in order to create a resource group you need a subscription okay if you have a subscription you can create a resource group and in, inside the resource group i can create a different resources you know so i will create a resource group 
a new resource group inside this subscription i will create a resource group name of this resource group i will just go and keep as az 900 resource group you know az 900 rg you know is the name of the resource group and i would like to place that resource group in uh, east us you know? so this is one uh, region i'll just place into the east us region okay and let me say review plus create okay now i would like to give a permission on my ac 900 resource group only because you know all these are the you know okay resource group i have created for the other uh, training purpose so i don't want to give the permission on these resource groups but i will definitely give the permission on you know okay easy 900 resource group okay so in order to provide a permission okay so i'll go inside the resource group okay and uh, there is a option called as you know access control i a m you know so i am stands for identity and access management you know so by clicking on this option i will be able to give a permission on my you know resource group okay to the different users so let me just go and click on this access control okay and let me click on i want to add an permission on this resource you know so i will add a role assignment okay which role i would give you know so i will you know preferably give only the reader role you know but apart from reader role you are having you know contributor role okay so reader will only able to read the content of easy 900 this resource group you know reader won't be able to create any resource or delete existing resource okay so if you want to give more privilege role you know you can come over here in this privilege role category and you know you can assign you know this contributor is a more you know a famous role people will allocate you know so contributor has a access of uh, you know all the resources they will read they can create a new resource they can delete an existing resource you know so contributor have you no know, more access than reader but if i start giving a contributor rights to everybody you know so everybody will create a new resource you know okay that will create a lot of you know chaotic situation for me to manage you know that's why i'll not give the contributor access but i'll give the reader access you know so i'll want to give this access to which member you know so whatever member i want to give uh, you know access i can just go and choose those member okay by the way by giving that uh, permission by member one by one rather than creating you know okay that will uh, create me a uh, lot of maintenance headache so instead i can go and create a security group and assign you know okay some members inside the security group and you can later go and give that permission you know on the security group but i don't have a time to create a security group that's why i'll just allocate uh, all these users explicitly only so all these users i'm trying to add i think no one is from the village So all these users 
I'm trying to add under Okay, all this user I'm giving that uh, reader permission on my resource group AZ900 resource group. I'll select. Okay, and I'll say review and assign. So once you, know, once you do a review and assign, Okay, maybe we'll have to wait for a minute or two. Okay, uh, once you once I assign this permission, better you if you are already logged in, log out and log in once again. Okay, and uh, you know you should be able to see. You know, okay, uh, once you log into the portal once again, portal dot azure dot com once again, then uh, you know you should be able to see the view like this. Okay, and if you search for resource group, you should be able to see only one resource group, and which is AZ nine hundred R G, which is and resource group which I have created just now. You know, so can somebody confirm, please? Are you able to see uh, that resource group? No, there is no limitation. Uh, you, know, you can add the user. By the way, we are not adding a user to the subscription. We are adding a user to the entire ID, and there is no limitation. So there are, you know, okay, uh, more user. You know, there are many users. So up to there are different licenses for the you know entire ID also, and per licenses in the. If I am using a free license. I can add uh, up to 50,000 uh, users also. That's okay. Yeah, if you're uh, watching like this, I will request you to log out once and log in once again. I said uh, log out once and log in once again. After that, you should be able to see. Yeah, yeah. so many people are able to see it. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, the reason why I have chosen what US region you know, because uh, for me, uh, all these resources I am creating, the cost is very important uh, fact. You know, okay. So whatever resources uh, I will at least go and create. You know, okay. I will create it in the East US because I have observed that uh, the cost of creating resources in that East US region will be lower as compared to the most of other regions. That is only uh, you know, okay, one reason why I have chosen uh, East US region. Okay. Yeah, I have already answered. You know, okay. Uh, so, but while creating a resource group or any kind of a resource, and if you want to choose a region, there might be a different factor. Uh, you know, okay, which uh, could be you know, okay, allowed uh, you as a decision factor. So one is a cost, of course. Okay. And second one is the, you know, okay, uh, the latency. So if your most of the users are, you know, uh, accessing your application uh, from the India region and, uh, you know, you're deploying your application in the uh, US region, you know, so they, then there will be a, definitely will be a latency because of the distance. You know, there is going to be a short, short latency because of the distance. So rather than you know deploying your resource, okay, in the East US, you can decide to you know okay reduce that latency. Okay, for reducing that latency, I can just go and deploy the region, you know, which is uh, closer to my users. Okay. Now yeah, good that uh, you know uh, everybody are able to see uh, this. So if you are able to see this resource group. Now let me just go and create uh, you know, one virtual machine. You know, so virtual machine means what? 
a virtual machine is one of the you know okay resource from a compute category as i said there are a lot of categories you are having compute category you are having a networking category you are having storage category you, know? you are having analytics category you are having ai category you know? there are a lot of categories under which you can create a resources so from the compute category i'll create one resource okay and i can search for okay a resource called as you know virtual machine if that is not available you can search for you know by typing here virtual machine so you will be able to see the virtual machine but of course you won't be able to create it as of now okay so i am having you know okay these two virtual machine which was present in my earlier resource group so you won't be able to see these two virtual machine because these are present inside my different resource group and as of now you are having a permission only on a az 900 resource group okay so i will just go and create an virtual machine and while creating a virtual machine it will allow me you know okay to whether i want to create a linux based virtual machine or i want to create a windows based virtual machine it will allow me to you know select that okay so this virtual machine will be placed under which uh, subscription so under this visual studio subscription i will be putting which is the resource group you know so i can come over here az 900 resource group will be you know my target resource group what is the name of uh, you know my virtual machine you know so i will be creating you know this virtual machine as a, you know linux based virtual machine maybe so i'll say vm 1 okay and you know for me i'll just go and choose uh, east us as a region okay because there are two reason uh, why i have choosing this east us region one is a cost factor okay and second one is the uh, most of the resources you will find uh, you know okay in the east us region okay not all the resources you can uh, you know create in all the regions okay but most of the resources i can go and create it under east us and the most important deciding factor for me is a cost okay so i'll just go and select east us region or i can just go and choose any other regions also which is available you know here inside this list okay there are a lot of option other options you know okay if i start explaining all those options you know it will take a lot of time you know so i don't want to you know okay uh, choose uh, you know i don't want to you know uh, modify any other option i can modify but i don't want to modify you know so i'll just go and straight away just go and choose this so whether i want to use a windows machine or a linux machine you know so whatever be the you know type of machine we can see we can explore all types of machine by clicking on see all images and there are lots of lots of images which are available like for example windows server windows 11 windows 10 you know you can create a red hat uh, linux ubuntu linux okay you can even go and have a particular software install on the you know okay operating system so for example if you want a visual studio software install on the windows machine you know so you can choose this okay so sometime you know what happens uh, if you are working on a corporate environment you know in the corporate environment we are using a machine of a you know company so on that machine we are not having a permission to install any kind of a software you know so i can just go and create a virtual machine on the cloud and whichever be the software i need you know for the you know exploring purpose or for the training purpose i can just go and install them and i can use it as it is okay so that restriction is not 
uh, you know, okay, uh, allowed on this because you will be acting as an administrator for these machines. You know? So you can see a lot of options are there. So almost there are 470 images you can choose from. Okay, but I want Windows machine only, oh, sorry, uh, uh, Ubuntu machine. This time I'll be choosing Ubuntu machine because if I choose a Ubuntu machine, then uh, everybody will be able to log in. If I choose a Windows machine, then only one person will be able to log in. Okay, so that's the reason I'll just choose Ubuntu. So as per my earlier selection, you know, that will come default selection as Ubuntu. So Ubuntu 20.04, that's the latest version. You know, I'll be choosing that. Okay, and based on whatever configuration I have selected, it will cost me. You know, so it will cost me somewhere around 5,800 rupees per month, you know, approximately. Okay, but of course, if I keep this, you know, active 24 by 7, okay, you know, approximately it will cost me, you know, somewhere, you know, uh, more or less, you know, uh, 5,800 rupees. So what we are doing, I am renting one machine from uh, Azure. So I'm not creating a machine on my, you know, okay, uh, laptop or my machine or on my desktop. I am renting one machine which will be created by Microsoft Azure, you know, and I will be using that machine. So amount of time I'm keep this, uh, you know, okay, machine active, amount of time I will use that machine that much amount of time I have to pay for that, you know. So that model is called as, you know, okay, uh, so maybe rental model, you know, what you can call. Somebody has asked me a question, okay, you know. So this is I am using one service from the Azure. So whatever, you know, uh, resources I will be consuming, you know, for that resource I will have to pay. Okay. I'll just go and use uh, the authentication as a, a password and I'll use the username as training and password as okay Makran at the rate one two three four five so that's the password I'm using Makran at the rate one two three four five OK. So I'm just uh, you know, uh, allowing for 22 so that uh, then we will be able to access that uh, Linux machine. OK. And over here you can see. There are, you know, OS disk will be added. Along with that. Uh, if you want any additional disk to be added or to be attached, we can do that also. OK. So if I go into the networking section, you know, there are a lot of other resources will be created. Like for example, virtual network is one of the resource will be created. The network interface card, you know, then we are having a public IP address using which uh, we will be able to access. OK. So I want to delete a public IP address whenever this machine get deleted. OK, and we will uh, you know, configure over here, you know, network security group. So all these resources will be created. You know, when I just go and create this virtual machine. So along with the virtual machine, there are you know, few other resources which will be a supporting resources or which will be acting as a dependent resources. OK, so along with the virtual machine, there is a disk will get created. Along with the virtual machine, there is a virtual network that will get created. Along with the virtual machine that will you know, create one more resource called a network security group. You know, along with that, it will create something called as a public IP. Along with that, it will create a something called as a network interface card. No, so all these resources, all these resources are acting as a dependent resource for the you no know, virtual machines. Okay, so when I create, you know, the virtual machine. Okay, 
so all these resources will be created under my resource group and i'll be able to see all those resources you know will be created under you know az900 resource group so this will create uh, within a minute so once it is created you know, we'll see so this has created what network security group public ip you know virtual network network interface card and then ultimately it is creating you know virtual machine and if i go inside this now if you can search now if everybody can search for virtual machine from a search box and now you should be able to see this virtual machine which is created under az900 resource code you know but most likely you will not see other two uh, you know virtual machine because i have created in some other resource group for some other purpose and now if you look at that vm1 you know so you can see all the options you know which is related to that virtual machine okay so one of the option i'll just go and pick up this public ip and using this public ip okay i'll just go and provide you public ip okay and i'll provide username sorry this is not a username the username is training and password is 12345 makranadare 12345 okay so using this credential i can connect to the you know machine and there are you know couple of ways of connecting you know this machine one of the simplest way by using a putty you know if you want to connect to uh, any linux machine which is present in the network you can just go and use what putty software to connect to the linux machine or you know windows provide ssh so we can open the command prompt our normal command prompt on a windows okay and we can type this command ssh username at the rate you know the ip address you know so this command you can type ssh whatever be the username of your virtual machine at the rate ip address of that virtual machine ssh you know username and uh, whatever be the ip address of my machine i will be using that and once i press enter you know uh, so that will allow me to connect you know and this will ultimately ask me you know the password and you have to type the password you know it is not going to visible while typing the password it is not visible so you will have to type it carefully the password and press enter so once you press enter you, know, you will be logged in to the vm you know and this is our linux vm i can just go and see you know my present working directory this is actually a linux vm but i am using a terminal of a window this is a windows terminal by using a ssh i am connected to the you know okay this uh, linux virtual machine you know so i can just go and show you once again so this command you can use to connect to the machine okay 
Now it got to stop. I think we just started. Okay, so let me click on that start button once again to start that virtual machine once it is started. Now let me just go and try to use this. That will ask me a password. So enter the password correctly. Makran at the rate one, two, three, four, five. And there you go. So you are able to log in. Look, so let me see how many people have connected now to this. So there are apart from me, there are only one. There is only one user who is connected to this. Uh, okay. So I'll request you to connect uh, to this uh, VM. Yeah, so I think everybody has connected. Uh, somebody is saying permission denied. So I don't think you should get the permission denied. Just try that command uh, carefully. Uh, if uh, there might be a you know case of uh, permission denied, if you are connected to uh, any kind of a VPN, you may not be able to connect to this machine because that VPN might be restricting you to connect. Uh, you know, so make sure you know you are not connected to any uh, VPN your company VPN, and then you can try. Uh, I'll just forward this uh, command SSH. OK. Training is a username. OK, and this is the IP address. So this command you can type on the command prompt. And type the password carefully. While typing the password, it is not visible. So you'll have to type it carefully. M-A-K-A-R-A-N-D at the rate one, two, three, four, five. Press enter. And that should uh, you know, work. OK, so now let me see how many people have connected. So there are uh, no, okay, 10 users I can see no, who are connected. You know? So I'll, all these users can say, uh, you know, can use the command you know, for creating a folder, you know, maybe deleting a folder, navigating to the root directory, checking, you know, whatever be the contents of the root directory. You know? So. This is your Linux machine, so you can install uh, you know, okay, uh, the software also. You can uh, deploy that application also. You know, so we can do uh, anything what we want to do. Yeah, say yes. Uh, Harsh, if it is showing you this message, say yes. Then it will ask you a password and you know, okay, you'll know, you have to type that password. Type the password carefully and it will work. It is M-A-K-A-R-A-N-D. 
the spelling of makaran is you might miss a so it's m a k a r a n d at the rate 1 2 3 4 5 so that's the password Are you raising the hand, Pragna uh, Saku? You are raising the hand or any doubt you are having? If you are having any doubt, you can write it back in the chat box. Okay. So if you are able to connect, you know, okay. So there are currently 14 people who have connected, including me. You'll have to just uh, restart, uh, re-login, log out and log in once again. You should be able to see that. Uh, Kirti. Uh, then uh, can you just check uh, whether you have logged into my uh, primary account only you know you can check over here is it showing you a primary directory or not if it is showing you a primary directory that means you are logged into my subscription if it is showing you any other thing then you will have to switch you have to come over here switch the directory okay and uh, you can you know switch to the primary tenant that will uh, work for me. So you can also see that uh, you know uh, Sopna, you can also see that because everybody are using a same credential. I am also using the same credential. So what you are having a permission, you know, that exactly same permission I am also having on this VM because we are using a same username. So whatever command you can type, you know, okay. You can, you can, you know, uh, type that command. It is a training machine only we have created, you know, so whatever uh, you know, exploration you want to do, you can do that on this machine. OK. So like that, you know, I can just go and create, uh, you know, OK. Another machine, you know, for example, Windows machine. You know? So I have already created Windows machine and uh, Anyways, uh, if I create a Windows machine, it will allow only one person to log in. Other person, you know, may not be able to log into that Windows machine. You know? So that's why I am just showing you. I have just already created a Windows machine. Okay. For my last session, I will just start it. You know, and the process of creating windows machine will be same okay or let me just show you i'll just show you how to create windows machine so if you are creating a windows virtual machine same way that to choose a resource group where you want to keep the machine you'll have to give a name to the machine you know so i'll just go and create VM two for the first machine name VM one without a description. Let me just follow that consistency. I'll select a resource group. Okay, I'll choose name as VM two. 
Okay. Region I'll keep uh, same. The most important over here, I'll choose a uh, image. Okay. And by the way, let me choose now image as Windows image. Windows Server 2022. Okay. So now when I use Windows image, okay. It is asking me again a size, you know, which, how many uh, gigahertz of RAM you want, how many CPU you want. You know? Based on that, your prices will be decided. You know, by the way, you can see and explore all the you know sizes which you are having. You know, so there are a lot of sizes. You know, depending on your need, you know, you can choose the size. Okay. So for my purpose, two CPU, eight GB is more than enough. So this will cost me this much amount per month. Okay. Let me use a username as a training. You know, let me use a password. Okay, so I just use a different password. Okay, and by the way, so since this is a Windows machine, you know, your RDP port must be open so that uh, you will be able to access it uh, through the remote desktop connection. You know, for the Linux machine, you need, uh, you know, port 22 open so that you will be able to, you know, connect it by using SSH. So for Linux machine, for connecting, you require 22 port 22. Now that port 22 has to be configured under network security group. And for Windows machine, you know, the port, you know, 3389, we should configure, you know, under, you know, uh, network security group. And by the way, other port also I can go and configure. This list is showing you only limited list. But once it is created, you can configure your custom you know, port also. So if you're running an application on port 8080, you can just enable that port 8080 so that uh, the request from outside will also receive to that virtual machine. Okay, so whatever be the incoming request are coming to the you know, VM. Okay. So which I want to allow, I can enable the port. Okay, so in this case, 3389 is a port. I will keep it on or I'll keep it active. Okay, let me delete this. Uh, delete and public IP address when the virtual machine get deleted. So that let me select that. Okay, so all these options, I just keep default and finally say review plus Okay, so my uh, VM is getting created, uh, so I'll just wait for one minute. Uh,
Okay, and once uh, the VM get created, you will be also able to see uh, it under uh, AC 900 uh, users. Yeah, so you should be also able to see under AC 900 resource group. Yeah. And this is my uh, IP address of this machine. And this is a Windows machine. You know? So let me connect to this machine. Let me copy uh, the IP address. And once you take a IP address for connecting this machine, you require remote desktop connection. So I'll be clicking on remote desktop connection. That will allow me to you know, enter an IP address or a host name or a computer name. Okay. And once I specify this IP address, I can click on a connect. And that will help me to connect to the you know, virtual machine, which is created in the East US region. You know, and uh, which is and Windows machine which we have created. And let me use what uh, username and whatever will be the password I have used. And type the password. And once you enter the credential correctly, you, know, you will be able to log in. But only one person will be able to log in, not other person, not uh, many people, because Windows machine allow only one, one user. So now if you look at this is another machine I have created and I'm logging into you know, the another machine. By the way, this is my, okay, this is my Windows uh, laptop I'm using and this is my, okay, uh, another Windows machine, okay, which I have just created and I'm just using that machine. Okay, so if you look at this, will open the another desktop, and you can see the you know, current time it is seven thirty eight a.m. in East US region. The local time is this. Okay. And whereas I am sitting in the, you know, okay, uh, Mumbai location, so my local time is this. Hey, Ritesh, you are raising the hand. Can you just write your, you know, uh, a question inside this? Hey, you have to type that uh, command, simple uh, command called as who command you can type it. Okay. And by the way, uh, can you just see this on my Linux terminal? It has gave me a message saying that, you know, our system is down, will down for, you know, okay, for the maintenance purpose. So this maintenance is going to done by the Microsoft people. Okay. So maybe we got that message from maybe a, a few minutes back. So in five minutes, my machine will be stopped. Okay, and maybe it will stop for one or two minutes. And then, okay, uh, we can also able to start that machine. So in my case, currently that machine must be stopped. That VM1, you no, know, you also may not be able to use it. No, VM1 is started, so that machine has restarted maybe. Okay, and let me just connect it. 
Yeah, so I can see. And let me say the who command, you know, that will give you what uh, whatever be the list of user who are connected. You know, who command you can say WHO on the Linux terminal. Okay. There is one more question, uh, which is. Uh, which is Raghav is asking what is availability zone? You know? So for understanding our availability zone. Uh, that's actually you know, give me an uh, opportunity to explain a lot of other thing. So I will take that question. Uh, so what is availability zone? OK, so for that, uh, you know, for understanding the concept of availability zone, you know, OK, uh, you should understand how Microsoft, uh, you know, OK, manages uh, the resources. You know, so ultimately, <coughs> my resources uh, will be created in any region. OK, so I hope you are able to see uh, the white screen in front of uh, you. Uh, can you just confirm you are able to see the white screen? As of now. You won't be able to see, but after this, now you should be able to see that white screen. So now let's suppose say we have selected a region as East US region. OK. So East US region. Here, your ultimately uh, your resource will be created. So what we have created till now, we have just created a virtual machine. You know, so when I go and create a virtual machine, it will be ultimately get created in the one of the data center which might be present in the East US region. And there might be a several uh, you know, data centers may be present in the East US region. OK. And on top of that, you are having a concept of a availability zone. <clears throat> you know? So if availability zone support, you know, region is supporting availability zone, then you will find, you know, okay, at max three availability zone in every region. If region is supporting availability zone, so you will find three availability zone. OK. And this is my availability zone one. This is my availability zone two. And this is my availability zone three. OK. I'll repeat once again, not all the region supports availability zone, but if the region supports availability zone, it will support exactly three availability zone. OK, so. Whenever our virtual machine get created. OK, so my virtual machine get created uh, inside a data center. Under a data center, my virtual machine get created. OK, and. If I choose, you know, OK, uh, you know, the particular availability zone, OK, for creating that virtual machine, you know, so my virtual machine, let's suppose say, created under this availability zone. OK. And this availability zone is a combination of, uh, you know, OK, uh, multiple, uh, data center one or more data center might be included inside the availability zone okay so now if i created one virtual machine over here okay and if i'm planning to create one more virtual machine you know which might be you know okay act as a you know backup uh, for this virtual machine you know so now if you just go and create you know the virtual machine in the same data center, you know, which your earlier virtual machine is present. Then you are putting yourself into a risky situation. You know, so what if 
this entire data center go down you know so then in this case your original virtual machine will be go down as well as your backup virtual machine will also go down you know so then your data is in you know, in risk or your service is in a risk your service might be remain unavailable till the time that data center go live you know so to provide the high availability you know okay microsoft has several concepts okay one of the concept is availability zone you know so if you choose a availability zone while creating a virtual machine your first virtual machine will be created maybe inside availability zone 1 okay and whatever be the backup virtual machine we are planning to create you know it will go and create inside this maybe another you know virtual uh, sorry another uh, availability zone that means ultimately get created in the you know okay another data center so if your data center goes down okay then still you have a backup virtual machine you know okay you can run your service and so availability zone is a concept you know which can uh, allow your service to become highly available okay so remember that availability zone is one of the concept you know okay which will allow you to you know uh, achieve more availability okay and this concept uh, you know you can relate to the uh, virtual machines okay so i hope you know okay this concept is clear to you uh kirti are you you know a part of my uh, organization can you just try to log out this and log in once again i think you have did that multiple time i can see from the earlier messages okay so one more you know okay a uh, problem this might be you might may not be a part of my organization so you have you provided uh, your email id to me i have added and then uh, you know okay, then i don't think it should be a problem so you can just log out once uh, maybe uh, clear the browser history you know try to log in once again no you should be able to access by using a gmail also okay i don't think it will be a problematic while accessing it through the gmail okay because other people are able to access it uh, by using a gmail also uh, but i'll recommend you to provide you know uh, any kind of uh, microsoft id that will be a uh, recommended okay uh, so i'll show you and somebody was asking me the id password for windows virtual machine uh, because i'll not provide that id password for windows virtual machine because uh, if i just provide you know only one person will be able to log in okay and there are you know okay uh, around 35 people who are currently logged in you know okay so they will be having a rest which one will be logging okay and if one person is logging other person will be disconnected you know so you will you no know, having a clash unnecessary you know so that's why i am not uh, sharing that uh, window id password this is already consume azure portal with this side i you may have uh, already you know okay azure id that's not a problem but if you are become part of my so did you receive that uh, invitation did you accepted that invitation that's the first question 
and if you have accepted that invitation which is you know come from my primary directory then you should see you know okay my uh, primary directory under your portal otherwise you know how come uh, you, know, you will be able to see you know so just check your gmail you should have received the uh, invitation from my side accept that invitation and uh, you know follow the process Uh, so uh, while creating uh, the resource group, uh, sorry, while creating a virtual machine, you know, okay, you can select almost all the region because almost all the region supports uh, the virtual machine. Okay, but there will be a prices difference, you know, depending on the, you know, okay, which place you are creating a virtual machine, okay, uh, the prices will be, uh, you know, okay, uh, uh, lower or higher, you know, depending on where you are creating it. As a redundancy, is there a new unlimited zone available for the reason which we select? How will be in this case? Yeah, so this is if uh, you know if you're not selecting any kind of a uh, you know okay uh, availability zone or if that availability zone not at all supported by the region, then in that case uh, you know okay. Uh, you are not having a control where your virtual machine will get created. It may create in the same data center or it may create it in the you know different data center. That is not uh, under your control. So if you want to control that, you have to select uh, you know uh, the availability you know zone, or there is one more option called as availability set. Okay. So availability set and availability zone. These are two you know okay option uh, from uh, that category availability option. You should be also able to see. So if you are able to, you know, okay, connect to the portal here, you should be able to see that. But did you log out and log in once again? So I'll just recommend you to Harsha log out once and log in once again. Okay, and then uh, try to switch and see. You know, here you should see the primary directory. Okay, so I'll show you a demonstration of one more resource. Okay, uh, which is an app service. So I'll just go and create an app service and we will try and deploy one uh, simple application on that app service. Okay. And once that application is deployed, you know, we will see, we, we will all uh, see the output of that application. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Harsha, you just try to follow this. Uh, so maybe uh, uh, once once I complete uh, the session, no, then I'll uh, you know, try to you know, see what is your problem. Okay, but let me complete that uh, app service and then uh, you know, I'll take all the questions. So, uh, so I'll go and create an app service. So app service is one of the resources uh, which comes under platform as a service which will allow you to deploy your application so only thing you should have you should have the application which you want to deploy okay so now first let me just go and set up the application which i want to deploy you know so i'll just go and you know uh, set up you know very uh, e easy a uh, .net application only uh, i'll just go and quick set up but that application could be a dotnet application or 
Java application or any other technology application. That doesn't matter. Okay, so I'll just go and create. Okay. So I'll just go and create uh, a folder called as MEC application. And I'll just switch to that uh, MVC application. And I'll just go and make use of a, uh, you know, okay. .NET new MVC. So that's a simple command, you know, in which you can create uh, the MVC project. And I'm not going to do any kind of a changes inside the application. So the way it is providing, you know, that way I will just go and deploy. Okay, so can you see this project has been created? You know, and this is going to create, uh, this is going to give me some kind of a CS proj. You know? So I just open this project. Okay, and you know, you will see this is the output uh, of the project. Oh, sorry, this is the code of the project uh, you are able to see. Okay. So all these files are included in that project. I will not change anything. I'll just simply go and run this project. You know? So for running this project locally, if you want to run this project locally, how will you run it? You know? So you have .NET build. So, so first of all, you should go and build the project. And once you build the project, you know, okay, you you have to run the project, .NET run. Yeah. But whichever language you are comfortable, you can just go and make use. You can create a project in the .NET or Java. You know? okay. Ultimately, you will be able to deploy that application on the Azure app service. And we'll be able to see the output you know, over here. So if I just go and open this browser, so this is the output uh, which I am getting. You know, so this is the output I am getting it from the local you no know, machine, local server. And this is the output I will now go and deploy to my, you no, know, uh, to my uh, app service. And once it is deployed on the app service, it is available. You know, anybody can uh, access it from the world. You know. Currently, I am the only person who is going to access this uh, the application because it is deployed on my laptop. Okay, so now let me just go and create one more resource which is capable of deploying, you know, the application, and that resource name is, you know, app service. You know, so. I'll go and create a resource called as app service. Okay. And I'll just go and you know create a new app service. I would like to keep that app service under AZ900 resource group so that you will also have access to that app service. Okay. And after that, I'll go and decide you know, what is the name of my app service. You know? Okay. So, uh, app service name, maybe I'll just give this as uh, my app. Okay. You know, so if you look at my app is already been taken because it is going to you know, create and give you a URL which uniquely will be accessible. You know? So my app, I'm just putting what uh, some number, random number, 1330. Yeah. So this is available. So, so ultimately, this will provide me a URL HTTPS my app 1330.azurewebsite.net and so that will be your entire url and you will be able to access that url 
and whatever be the application running under that. You know, so if I just look at the publish option, you now we are having the option called as code. I can go and deploy any kind of a code. I can deploy the Docker image, deploy the normal static application also. You know, so I'll just go and choose. I want to deploy a code. I'm having currently you know, dot .NET code. So I can just either choose what dot .NET uh, dotnet 6 7 8 i can choose anything so i'll just choose what dotnet 8 okay that's the latest version okay and uh, dotnet 8 application i can execute on the linux as well as on the windows platform you know because dotnet 8 you know is a kind of a platform independent uh, just like a java okay but if you choose what uh, ASP.NET, which can be executed only on the Windows. You know, so your Linux option is, is disabled. You know, but apart from that, you're having .NET, Java, Node, PHP, Python, all these languages are available to use. So let me choose. .NET 8. And as a part of uh, web app, it will also allow me to create, uh, you know, okay, the app service plan. So app service plan, you know, I am not going to create one more app service plan because I am having already app service plan created, and there is a cost, you know, involved in that app service plan, you know. So there are different types of app service plan. Depending on how strong you know app service plan you are choosing, more feature you will choose, more you will have to pay. You know? So there is app service plan which is already created. So I'll just use that app service plan. I'll not create a new app service plan. Okay. And with this, uh, let me just go and say review and create. Okay, and that will ultimately will be created. And this will take another you know, 30 seconds. 30 seconds or up to one minute of time is to set up. And once it is set up, you know, you will be able to you know, get a URL. Okay, on that URL, currently you will be able to see a default page, whatever be the default page currently. You will be able to see the default page. But ultimately, you know, okay, we will be uh, able to deploy our application. So once I deploy my application, I will be able to see, you know, whatever be the output of my application, I will be able to see, you know, on this uh, web app also. So let me go into the resource. So if I go inside this resource, okay, this is my URL. Okay, so you can copy this or you can directly browse this. You know, so I can just directly browse this. So whatever be the default output, you'll be getting that default output. Let, so let me give you this. You can also go and try out this. Uh, Manish is asking about the options. I don't know if you will have to you know, uh, 
deploy that application for the first time you know by using some kind of a process okay you cannot import uh, you know any kind of a existing application so because you are changing your you know execution environment right you are changing that uh, you know okay execution environment to the cloud so you will have to go and deploy you know okay that application for the first time at least okay the process which we are following you will have to follow that process okay so you can just go and uh, hit this url so currently you will be able to see the default output but once I deploy my application, you know, okay. And there are different ways of deploying. You know. So if you come inside the application page, there is an option called as you know, under deployment. There is something called as deployment center. You know. So you have option called as deployment center. You can click on this deployment center. Okay, and uh, there are a lot of options for the deployment. So you can use what uh, any one of the CICD. You can use Git. You can use Azure repo. You can use GitHub. Okay, or you can deploy it uh, by using, you know, uh, file transfer protocol FTP, or you can deploy it from any one of the editor, like for example, VS Code, you know, or from Eclipse, or from, uh, you know, a Visual Studio, you know. So these are the options are available to you, you know, for the deployment. Okay. So I'll just go and choose a deployment through a Git. SCM basic authentication disable folder of it. So you can just enable it. Okay. So if we go back to the deployment center. Let me choose local git. So by using the git command, I will be able to uh, you know, uh, push and pull some you know, code. Okay. So by the way, if you choose this local git, okay, then under here, under the credential, you'll have to Specify the credential. Okay, so if I come inside uh, the deployment center, so I should be able to access the Git, local Git, which I already selected, I believe. You know, so this is the path. You know, and uh, over here, uh, so that will allow me to type some password. So let me just type the password. Okay. 
this ID password I will be using whenever I'll just push the code. So there are a lot of uh, you know other ways, a lot of other simpler way also available. Okay, but I'll just show you this option. So you will be able to learn something. Okay, so this URL I want to you know the upload something from this is my uh, local machine. So from this local machine. Okay, I will be creating very first thing. I will be initializing an empty Git repository by using Git init. So once you use a Git init, the next thing I will be staging all the files from the current folder, you know, into a staging directory. All these files are untracked, so let me just go and make use of git add dot. Giving MSC application file index permission denied. Okay, so this is giving me some kind of a weird problem. Um, so. It will take some time to resolve this. So let me just go and you know, deploy it by using some other way. So. Uh, if you just open the VS code uh, or Visual Studio code. You're having an option of deploying you know, from the Visual Studio code also. You know, so let me do that. You know, so I already built the project. Okay, let me once rebuild the application. And once you build the project, you know, there is an option called as publish an MVC application. So let me publish that application. Okay, so that is going to allow me to create and publish profiles. So where do you want to publish the application? So I want to publish it to the Azure. You know, so let's select that Azure. Now you are having app service. So app service you have created for Windows or Linux. So I have created app service for Windows only. I'll just choose that app service for Windows. And that will you know allow me to choose what the app service. So there are two resource group under which you are having app service. You know? And by the way, I have already logged in to the Microsoft account. OK. And I will just choose that app service wherever I want to deploy my application. Okay. So I'll just say finish. So once I say finish, my published profile will be ready. OK, and once I do uh, a publish. Hopefully, you know, it should uh, publish that application. And we should see the output uh, on the URL. You know, so you should see that output over here. That application output. So once this deployment is completed, then I'll be able to see. Yeah, so my application is deployed successfully. So once this application is deployed successfully, you should see a browser open. Once this process is completed fully. OK, I should see a browser open. Or I can just refresh this. You know? So once you refresh this, you know, so you are getting the output, whatever we were getting the output locally. 
So that output we can now see everybody are able to see it on this uh, okay, URL. OK. So now, you know, if if you wish to change something. You know, so for example, I'm changing. In the index.html. OK. And I'm just adding. New feature. OK. So once you do this changes, OK, you'll have to redeploy. OK, so currently we are able to see only. You know, this welcome. But without new feature. You know? So once you go and rebuild. Redeploy it. You know, you will be able to see that new changes what you have you know, made inside the application. You know, so I can come over here. Publish the application once again. You know, I already created a published profile. I'll have to just now say publish. You know, so publish profile, you have to create it for the first time. For the next time, you can just go and click on simple publish. You know, and once the new code has been published, okay, then you can come over here and refresh this. So whatever be the new feature, you know, I will see beside the welcome. OK, so that is done. So I can come over here, refresh this, you know, so I should see that new feature over here. So whatever code I am changing locally, you know, I'm able to see on this website also. So you can also deploy your application which you have developed. You know, OK, deploy the application and make it available online. And this is the URL. We can access it from anywhere from the world. OK. OK, so that's it, guys. Uh, you know, I'll take now some questions. Take um, a question. What is Manish is saying? If we have source on local machine or VSS. And so in my case, the source code was present in the local machine only and from the local machine, I have deployed it uh, in the Azure. OK, so local machine. I can use what uh, you know, the deployment directly deployment through the any editor. That editor could be uh, VS Code, Visual Studio, Eclipse, you know, IntelliJ, you know, okay, or PyPy, you know, I can just, oh, sorry, PyCharm, I think. Okay, so I can use deployment by using the editor or deployment by using any kind of a CI CD tool or deployment by using FTP, file transfer protocol, or deployment through. You know, okay, uh, the local get also that is allowed. So there are, you know, uh, very, uh, you know, uh, different, uh, you know, uh, different options you are having for the deployment. I have just, uh, you know, normally uh, you know, created the application and I have just published that uh, application. Same way, same way. You know, if you have uh, the Spring Boot application, you'll have to create, uh, you know, okay, uh, the application app service like that. Okay. Uh, so whatever be the application you have created, uh, you know, okay. So ultimately, that uh, application will be deployed. Okay, and it needs uh, some kind of, uh, you know, okay. Uh, software which is jdk software okay but let me just tell you also one more point no 
so for deployment of a spring related uh, you know application you have one more service apart from a app service you have one more service called as you know spring app now let me just show you that you know that option so if you just go and search for you know, azure spring app you know, so you can think of deploying the application by using this option you know so this is specially created for the spring uh, you know uh, related application only so this has a lot of you know additional feature okay that is required for uh, deployment of spring application okay apart from you know app service this is having lot of other features but you know this resource is very very expensive than the app service Use any to yeah, yeah, so you can use if there is a possible that you can deploy your application, multiple application on the single virtual machine, you know, on the different port. So only thing you'll have to configure that port and make it available for you know incoming request. Okay, so you have to configure that network security group. And you can, you know, okay, deploy no matter you are using a Linux or Windows, uh, you know, okay, the multiple application. The Linux will be uh, more cost efficient rather than using uh, Windows. Okay, so for most of the server side application, uh, you will use what uh, the Linux only. Yeah, about the recording of this session, I believe this is uh, being recorded. Yeah, this has been recorded and uh, it will be uh, you know available on on the Synergetics YouTube uh, channel. Yes. Maybe you can check it. Uh, maybe after uh, maybe on Monday you can check it. Uh, it will be available. Yes, I'm sharing a YouTube channel subscription link here. Uh, meanwhile, you subscribe your YouTube channel so you can get uh, recordings. Yeah, yeah. So Manish is sharing, uh, you know, okay, the recording. Oh, sorry, uh, the YouTube channel list. Okay. So once we upload that uh, video, you will be, you know, okay, having this uh, video available. Okay. But uh, apart from this video, you can find lot of other interesting video which are related to the some of the people who are asking uh, the. AI related uh, the thing no so there are a lot of AI related uh, videos which has uh, you know okay which trainings which has been delivered in the past so you will also get to know, you know? and in next week also we are having uh, one AI related uh, training which is specifically AI for a Gen AI. Session. Yes, Gen AI session is there. Yes, on next yeah. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So can you just uh, you know put the link of that also because there are few people who are asking about that. Uh, yes, yes, we'll, we'll share the link or you can simply follow uh, us on our social media platforms so you can uh, uh, get updated on our upcoming events and webinars. OK, I'm sharing here uh, after the afterwards. So Harsh, uh, you are asking about any voucher for I don't think any voucher from our side. I will have to check it uh, whether you know we will provide or not but most likely there is no voucher from uh, our side you will get but from your company side if you check it mostly you know okay they will have some uh, voucher or if you use while registering your uh you know az 900 exam no so your company might have some kind of a discount your company email id you can provide and uh, you may get uh, you know some discount uh, we have discounted a uh, voucher, uh, Makran. Oh, actually, yes. Uh, we have twenty five percent discounted voucher. Uh, if okay. uh, anyone want, uh, please connect with uh, us. Uh, I am sharing my email ID here.
Yeah, for other topic related to AZ 900, we'll have to attend, you know, okay, the complete course of AZ 900. Uh, okay, there you will get uh, the other topics uh, related to the AZ 900. Yes, uh, and also we have our AZ 900 full uh, uh, training on our YouTube channel. If you want to, uh, you can uh, access the our recording. It's free. Okay. Yeah, so other people have any other question? So I, I just uh, watching this uh, questions that try to answer all the questions. Uh, but any other person is having any other question? I may have missed. Yeah, you can deploy the application directly from the Git also. You know, by using a Git command, you can deploy it. By using Git push pull, you know, you can. Uh, deploy that application also. Yes, Ritesh uh, uh, already shared my email ID on chat. Uh, Manish Korea at synergetics com. Yeah, uh, so uh, there is one question from Ritesh is saying, you know, okay, to add more, more on intra IT tenant and, you know, so by the way, uh, you know, intra ID tenant ten, and uh, tenant domain, you know, okay. Uh, this is the topic uh, you know, for uh, AZ104. This is not a topic of AZ900 actually. Okay, but I'll just tell you in short, intra ID, you know, it just recently been, uh, you know, rebranded by the Microsoft uh, as intra ID. Earlier name was Active Directory. Active Directory is a place where your identities will be provided by using Active Directory, you know, okay. So user will get identity or application will get the identity, you know. So it is simple term. It is an identity provider. Entra ID is simply, it's an identity provider. So I've added few users. You guys have added into my Entra ID. So you will be also getting, you know, okay, and, uh, you know, okay, user principle. Okay, so that using the user principle, you will be verified your correct user in order to access my, you know, okay, or the intra ID and uh, uh, associated bolna. subscription. Okay, so intra ID, it just simply, you know, okay, identity provider where the users will get an identity or the application will get an identity. Okay, and earlier I used to con configure my own, you know, intra ID, but uh, nowadays Microsoft has made this process very, very complicated. Okay, earlier I used to provide, I used to create a lot of intra ID. That's why I can see, see there are so many intra ID I have created in a past. Okay, but now if you look at Microsoft has made that process very, you know, okay, uh, dif difficult. Okay, so for creating the, ent uh, you know, okay, your own uh, entry ID tenant, you require, you know, okay, you individually, you cannot uh, go and create, you know, you as an organization, okay, you can create it because ultimately it will go and ask uh, some GSTA number for creating that, uh, you know, tenant, okay. So earlier it was very smooth process. I used to create any kind of an intra ID, but nowadays, okay, maybe after uh, uh, maybe December 2023, it has you know become very very, very difficult for me to create the uh, intra ID. So if you just go and see over here intra ID, there is an option called as manage tenant. You know, so if you click on this manage tenant, okay, it will allow me to create a new tenant. But if you just click on this new tenant, you know, okay. So Microsoft Entra ID option is disabled. I can't create a new Microsoft Entra ID. Okay, so there are, you know, some prerequisite. You should fulfill those prerequisites, then only you will be able to create uh, the Entra ID. So nowadays it is not 